Good evening, everyone, and thank you so much for coming. I'm going to open my talk tonight with you all to talk a little bit about some things in life that have made my life a little bit complicated. Muhabbin ibn Musa al-Khwarizmi. This man invented math. Fun fact, you cannot graduate from college without passing algebra. This man is the bane of my existence, and my mom <laughs> asked me to remind all of you that he's actually ethnically Persian, which does not help my case. I can be proud of you if you don't stop me from reaching my goals. The University of Utah Department of Commuter Services. Not only did I walk away from the university, <laughs> thank you for the thumbs down, I agree with you. <laughs> not only did I walk away from college with a fine education, I also walked away with a whopping $500 in parking tickets and fines. <laughs> Thanks for being proud of me. <laughs> and when the University of Utah Parking Enforcement came to collect, my, t my money was tied up elsewhere. <laughs> We are all victims of Sephora. <laughs> I think I'm wearing $100 worth of Sephora on my face right now. <laughs> and this man. This man made my life incredibly complicated. In the summer of 2003, my family was investigated by the FBI on grounds of being a suspected terrorist activist family. Two FBI agents came to our home and interviewed my parents. Looking back, I'm amazed at how one man could impact my life from thousands of miles away. In the years after these events, in the years after these events, our TV was a nonstop stream of terrorism-related content, especially in the news. I cannot look back at my time as a child without the words war on terror looming in the background. Tonight, I want to talk about terrorism, where it came from and what it means. Let's start with the basics. Terrorism is defined as the unlawful use of violence and intimidation in the pursuit of political aims. That is the agenda of a terrorist, to use violence to achieve a political objective. So how was Osama bin Laden and organizations like ISIS so incredibly successful? They understood this method and strategy to achieve their goals. In order to ultimately achieve their political agendas, a terrorist or terrorist organization needs resources, a lot of followers, and foundationally more than anything else, a terrorist organization needs legitimacy. Legitimacy is the reason they live to fight another day. Legitimacy is everything. If legitimacy topples, everything topples. We can effectively end their path to reaching their political objectives if we can break their legitimacy. Understanding this hierarchy is so critical to win the war on terror. Do not destroy terrorists disarm them. And when I'm saying disarm them, I'm not talking about taking their weapons away. I'm talking about taking their power away. I'm talking about taking their legitimacy away. These organizations win their legitimacy by using religion. But the idea of using religion to win legitimacy and achieve a political, to achieve a political goal is not new. We have been here before. The Ku Klux Klan was an organization that took religion, changed it, and exploited it to achieve their agenda. Show of hands, how many in this room believe the KKK is a sect of Christianity? No one. Why? First, because that would be an inaccurate statement. The Ku Klux Klan is not a sect of Christianity. Christianity does not support, nor does it preach, the mission of the KKK. And second, 
we don't believe KKK is a sect of Christianity because by calling them what they claim to be, we legitimize their cause. The KKK uses scriptures. They believe what they're doing is actually going to help them on the other side. They think they're doing it for God. Note, religion is not ideology. I want you to imagine these concepts in your mind and I want you to build a brick wall between the two. Religion and ideology will never be the same, regardless of the religion and regardless of the ideology. Just like the KKK is not Christianity. Islam is not terrorism, and terrorism is not Islam. Nor is the, fun, the ideology that fuel terrorism Islam. How can I say that to you today? with so much confidence and conviction. I am pretty confident about this. <laughs> I can tell you this because what you don't know is as Muslims, we all can go back to a single source, and that is the Quran. The Quran is our holy book. The foundations and fundamentals of what our religion is, is found in this book. And yet the ideology that is preached by all these terrorists who claim to be Muslim contradicts the very foundations of my religion. I will give you an example. When you think of a terrorist, some of you, one of the first things that come to your mind is a suicide bomber. Someone yelling in the name of God to blow themselves up to kill maximum amount of civilians, as is encouraged by terrorist leaders. But in the Quran it says, وَلَا تَقْتُلُمْ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do not kill yourselves. This is one example out of many on contradictions between ideology and terrorism. So how is this possible? Are there just always Muslims who just don't know? Are we all so in the dark about it? How does nobody know about that? I will tell you what's alarming. These organizations, are, their legitimacy is fueled by our media. We repeat it over and over and over again on every media platform that these terrorists are Muslims and we do it for free. They take our clips, they take our headlines, and they broadcast it to all of their followers and solidify in their eyes and in their minds, both there and here, that they are the true Islamic leaders of their time. and you, they use our media as their greatest weapon. This is how the terrorists win. I want you all to think about 9-11. Think about where you were that day. Think about the pain and the fear and the chaos. Think about how helpless we all felt that day. On that day, they hijacked the airplanes. On that day, the planes were not the only thing that were hijacked. On that day, Muslims, Muslims who look like me, they felt the pain, the fear, and the chaos. They felt the drowning feeling of helplessness. Only they felt it twice. They felt it once for the country they love, and they felt it second for the sacred religion they live by. On that day, that day they hijacked the airplanes. They hijacked Islam. I am here to take my religion back. I'm here to take my religion back for all the victims. For all those individuals who perished in the Twin Towers. For all the soldiers who died on the battlefield fighting terrorism. for all the Iraqi civilians who died on their own soil, for the Syrians who drowned in our oceans, 
escaping the terror of ISIS. And for all the young Muslims who turn their backs on Islam, growing up in front of a TV that taught them their religion was terrorism, I am here to take back my religion for them. Muslims, Americans, and Islam, the religion, we all share a common enemy. And that enemy is the cancerous ideology that has killed more Muslims than centuries of wars. Whether it's motivating them to commit suicide in the name of God, whether it's the thousands who died under the bombardment of bombs coming from them, not from Americans, and then to be bombed by Americans. As Americans sharing these common enemy, we have to do what we've always done. We have to work together to defeat it. The first thing is that we must all hold our media accountable. Understanding that these organizations and this ideology gains its leg legitimacy, gains their legitimacy, gains their legitimacy <laughs> from our media, we are the ones who are empowered to stop them. That means watch what you consume. That means likes, shares, comments. That means if someone else shares it, do you stop yourself? That means paying attention to your media. How are Muslims being portrayed? How are terrorists being portrayed? Are they the same? Second, words are incredibly powerful. And we, as Americans, and I'm not going to limit it to Americans because I think it kind of transcends to the rest of the world too, need to change the way that we talk about terrorism. Every time we use the term radical Islam, we imply that this religion is equal to the ideology that it contradicts. And that is a lie. Every time we call their actions radical Islam, we fuel their legitimacy. And we pave their way to fight it for another day. Whenever you see their actions, call them for what they are. Do not call them religious. Do not call them Islamic. Do not call them Muslim. And third, talk about it with your neighbors, with your friends, with Muslims. Ask questions. Why do you wear hijab? Who is Al-Qaeda? There's something I left out earlier when I told you the story of the day the FBI came to our home. After the FBI agents left our home, my mom came and found me kind of sitting in this corner where I had peeking in to see what was going on. And she had a conversation with me that I'll never forget. She said, I know what you saw was scary. We had two FBI agents come to our home and they asked us a lot of questions. They wanted to fingerprint and they had kind of intimate questions you've never heard before. Right now this country is afraid because of what happened that day, alluding to 9-11. You might see some things on TV, and kids at school may think, say some things to you that are kind of, might hurt your feelings. But people are just afraid right now. But don't ever forget that this country gave us so much opportunity, and its people are kind and welcoming. Don't ever hate America. Take care of it. I am taking care of America the best way I know how. Clear up misunderstandings that I lived with for a very long time. Protecting it from terrorists who hijacked my religion to hurt my country. And I'm asking you to join me to do the same.